Welcome to Bears in Exile. Today is Thursday, May the 9th, and this is a quick hit on the indexes. So, last night we didn't have too much really to work with. We were hoping for a red day or something that would give us some kind of inclination as to what is going on. And I think we've got that today. Um, certainly it's more constructive than uh, last night, but we'll go through all of that. The Dow down 22.5 points, making a new all-time high, ending with a spinning top. Well, that seems uh, semi-promising, right? We're at a, forming some sort of resistance at this point, and people are kind of mulling about not knowing what to do next after this very large run. Well, uh, there is plenty to look at. For one, we have a mild topping area in the heat map, but uh, these have stretched out so long it's not overly useful at this moment, unfortunately. Uh, beyond that, we're very high on the CCI, Stochastics, the RSI. Uh, we still have the MACD pointing up. We did get a very slight tick down on the MACD histogram. That uh, should encourage the bears a little tiny bit. Um, oh, and the 14-day is actually pointing up still. So, at this moment, obviously very extended on some very important indicators. If we have a move down, it would be a secondary reset. At least at this time is what it would be. So, the door seems to be open on the daily. Can the uh, bears go ahead and step through it? That is the big question since they have been utterly, uh, you know, failing at doing so in uh, for many, many months now. Uh, going on to the 60 minute, so daily, the door is open for the bears, at least for a short period of time. And 60 minutes, here we are. Now this is very interesting because well, we'll do a zoom out first. For one, we have really good alignment for further decline at this moment. Uh, we have the stochastics going down, we have the 14 day RSI moving average very high, down on the CCI, the RSI, the MACD with the bearish cross, and the MACD histogram going down. Uh, all very nice. But, at the same token, we can see the movement today, the big drop, which uh, definitely should get some people concerned. Uh, we can see that it was bought at its extremities and essentially forms a pretty decent uh, little support level. Now if this were to break then uh, down here at uh, 15.020 uh, should be a catch but really the next one would be down here at 14.960. Uh, in either case it's not a huge drop from here to, uh, to a support. Um, Actually, one thing I did not touch on the daily, which I really should have. We had no downtick. If we had had a downtick, this would be very simple. And we do not have it. So maybe we can get that tomorrow and make it easy. If we were to have a downtick, it would take us into the area of 14,900. That is the logical place. If it were to waterfall through here, then it would be going down to the 14,750 area. So those are some... Uh, pretty nice, fairly concrete levels. 200 points to the downside, and then uh, more like 400 points to the downside. Can it do that? Uh, we don't know. We don't have a downtick. So, hopefully tomorrow we'll get something. Um, going on to SPX, down 6 points. Really not too much. Everything is identical to the Dow. No need to rehash. And... New all-time high, bullish. Uh, fat body spinning top, indecision. We have no downtick. If we do get a downtick, it will be going to the area of um, about 1607. And if we get a waterfall move, that would take us down to about uh, 1585. So those are some decent levels. It's not huge, but uh, yeah. 
even if we decline the uh, we have a new recent high new all-time high which would have to be rechallenged. so even a move down would be reversed and there would be at, an, at least an attempt to meet it if not exceed it an attempt so really do the bulls have too much to worry about at this moment I don't think so um going on to the VIX the door is open for the Bears, obviously, on SPX and the Dow. Does the VIX tell us anything? And the answer is yes. It certainly does. Uh, on this drop that we've had this past week, we opened up this gap right here. Of course, we have this gap above, and we have this gap below. This gap below. Today, the majority of this gap was filled it would not be overly difficult for it to close this gap, which coincides with the major price, I'm sorry, the uh, long-term moving average bar, and today backing away from, from doing so. Um, it relieves some of the bottoming area in the heat map, but it is still pretty strong. Beyond that, we have most of the things trying to poke up on the daily. The stochastics, the CCI, the RSI, the MACD, the MACD histogram. Actually, the MACD is going sideways, but the histogram is ticking up. So we do have good influence here for continued move up. Do I really trust it? Uh, I don't trust it just to take off and, you know, beat all of these recent highs. At least not yet, I don't. But does it have enough influence to easily overtake the gap fill? Sure. Sure it does. Um, would this be considered a major move? Well, the 14 day RSI moving average is going sideways today. It could easily keep going down, in which case a move up would be a secondary reset. But it is kind of difficult. If it was just pointing down, that would be easy. But it is ticking sideways, which is kind of odd. I think it would only be right to look at the 60 minute just to see if things are in alignment in the 60 minute time frame, the opposite of what SPX and the Dow are doing. And yeah. I think uh, I think it is. It is more positive than negative. Um, very nice move up in the 60. There is more room to go as the 14 day RSI moving average gets closer to its high, but it still has a little ways to go. Stochastic is turning to join with it. The CCI is already too high, though. Uh, the RSI is has a little room to move, but not overly. So we should be able to guess here that in the 60 there is enough to close the gap, but probably not enough to uh, you know, do some kind of solid breakout that uh, just blows away all of these, uh, uh, the gap down here. Oh, I guess I wasn't zoomed correctly. 14 day RSI moving average does appear to be pointing down. Okay. So this actually kind of makes sense too with the ascending lows. The uh, bears want to maintain that. Of course, if it uh, breaks, it's going to get ugly real fast and the markets are going to fly. Um, IWM, small caps. Very similar to the down SPX with a few notable differences. We do not have, oh, do we? Oh, we barely have a new high, but it still counts as a new high. Um, it is a spinning top, it is inside, not the best signs. And everything is uh, very similar to the down SPX and other aspects. Uh, so this does have good alignment for further down movement. But even if it were to close this gap right here, this new high should be attempted a retest of it, if not exceed it. Uh, of course, a failure before getting back up once it try, does the retry uh, would be the most bearish uh, possibility. And going on to SBY to look at our volume information and round out the day. And we did get what we were looking for. How about that? the fifth green. One reason to be very skeptical of this move down, especially since we do not have down ticks on everything. We now have five greens. 
the movement down today can be explained by a tick down in the on balance volume. This could tick back up tomorrow. Maybe it'll tick down tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, this is aligned extremely well, perfectly well, that if this ticks up, everything will tick up and probably have a very strong move to the upside. So there it is. The door has been opened. Do the bears walk through it or do they close it and then attempt to walk through it? That is the question. As always, all investing decisions are your own. This chart and video for entertainment, educational, and consumption of time purposes only. Thank you very much.